Today's layout fitting is going to be the squared around. This is the elevation view and the plan view. In order to lay it out the way that I'm going to demonstrate, the top and bottom openings need to be parallel to one another. If I wanted to do it quickly, I could use a quarter plan view or a half plan view. But for today, I'm going to do the full plan view to make sure beginners understand the whole pattern development. So I'm going to start by drawing a five by five square because the squared around that I will be developing the pattern for is five by five square to a four inch round circle. Now that I've completed the five by five square, I'm gonna locate my four inch circle directly in the center of this square. I'm simply finding the center. Now, Adjust your compass to two inches and draw a circle, a four inch circle that is. I am now getting ready to divide my circle into 12 equal spaces. Again, this could have been done by simply drawing a quarter plan view. Set your dividers equal to the radius, strike an arc. There, you have now divided into 12 equal spaces. And it's good practice to give them numbers. I'm also gonna letter my corners. The next thing to, you, we need to know is how tall do we want this fitting to be? And in this case, I'm gonna make it four inches tall. So therefore, this squared around is five by five to a four inch round measuring four inches tall. Right now you see me adding or scratching, scribing, whatever you want to call it, simply to, for the beginner. These are the element lines that need to be transferred over to the true length triangle. Here at seven, 
I draw this line down to indicate this is where my seam is going to be. So 7x will be my seam. Now, the next step is to take every element line and transfer it horizontally to your true length triangle. In this case, this is 1A. And you would do this for every element line on a squared around. In the perfect world, we would only need a quarter plan view and all the element lines would be identical. But sometimes the round is not always in the center, which requires us to write down many different element lines or find different true lengths. A11 and A12 are identical in length. A10 is identical to A1, only because this is a square and the round is directly in the center. As you can see here, I'm demoing the B1 is the same again as A1. B2, B3, and B4 would go there. Your full plan view is what we just drawn. I could have gone with a half plan and get the same element lines. And even less again, the quarter plan. But we'll do that later on when we get more used to the fabricating these fittings. The seam needs to come over to the horizontal line also. So measure 7x, the length of the seam, mark this one 7x. Okay, now I'm ready to start developing my pattern. We know we have one side five inches at the base because the base is five by five. So here I'm drawing A and B five inches apart. There's my AB. We need to find point one. Set your dividers from A1 to the height of the fitting, which was four inches tall, and that is your triangulated length. B1 and A1 are, are identical. Now with your compass triangulated over B2 and A12, strike both arcs on each side of one. Then set up your compass to 1 12th of the circumference of your top diameter. And use one 
Again, I'm just illustrating one twelfth of the circumference. Use one as your center. Strike an arc on the left and the right side to establish number two and 12. Now we're gonna try and find A11. So set your compass to A11, over four inches tall. So you are physically finding the true length, A11. Set your point needle on A, strike an arc towards 11. And do the same thing because it's identical on the other side for B. This compass is set at 1 12th of the top diameter. We now have found 11 or, and 3 and 11. By drawing in some of these lines, it sometimes help the students identify which side they started and when they can finish. They also serve as bend lines in a shop. Next step is I need to find number 10 and number four. Those numbers are on those arcs somewhere. So set your dividers from B4 on your true length triangle over four inches tall and strike the arc. So B4 and C4 are the same. But before I do that, from C to B, I set my dividers to five inches because the base is five by five. So I'll set it at five and put set the needle on B, strike an arc, and do the same thing with A, strike the arc. And then I'm going to be setting the compass again from B4 on the true length triangle. You have now found C and D. So we technically got three sides done, but if you look close at the top, we only have six spaces and we need 12. Now we need to do D9 or C5.
C5 and C6 are identical, which were the same as A11 and A12, or B2 and B3. So now we're going to try and find 8 and 3, or I should say 6. C6, D8. Eight to seven and six to seven. So C seven and D seven are the same as A one and B one. There, the top part is done because if you counted the spaces, you would see you have 12 spaces on top. But the bottom is a square and you'll notice we only have three triangles in there right now. So we're gonna finish this off by measuring C to X. which is going to be two and a half inches because it is half of five. D to X is the same thing. So from D, strike an arc two and a half inches away and do the same thing at C. And now you need the element line, seven X. Set the needle of the compass on seven. Strike your arc on the bottom to find X. Same thing. If you've done the pattern right, that angle should be 90 degrees. There you have it. You're squared around. Now simply connect the dots on the top with your pencil or your snips in a shop. by freehand. Well, I hope I was able to help you out lay out this squared around. And for more layouts, you can subscribe to my channel.